Turning now to the Disney showdown, activist investor Nelson Peltz is gearing up for a proxy fight against the entertainment giant after the company opposed his attempt to secure a seat on the board. Here's what Peltz told our David Faber this morning about why he's going after Disney's management. My goal is to reduce corporate overhead to a point that the company gets better. I'd like to see this company stop running like a matrix and start running like the companies we've been involved in, where they have real CEOs of businesses with real P&Ls, real cash flows, and, really, and real projections. So as Pelt's right, let's bring in Matt Bellany of Puck. He's the former Hollywood Reporter Editorial Director. Matt, great to have you with us. Thanks. Um, you know, for shareholders, they, they got a great... You know, terrific surprise with with Iger coming back, and and now they have this choice as to whether or not they want to allow Peltz on the board when they vote their proxy. And so I'm wondering if you think Peltz's arguments resonate when I, I'm sure a lot of Disney shareholders would like to see what Iger has to has to offer. Yeah, that's the bizarre thing here is because Iger was welcomed back as the savior of the company after the debacle with. Bob Chapek, and now the honeymoon is really over. He's got to figure out how to deal with Nelson Peltz. And what he's saying isn't wrong. Yes, they do need to reduce costs. They do need to look to a sustainability model for the streaming business, which, you know, Disney has had real problems there. They lost $1.5 billion in streaming last quarter. But it's not as if Iger doesn't know this and isn't making these moves already to do this. And a lot of the stuff that Nelson Peltz is saying, for instance, in the interview, he said, you know, streaming is an easy business. Well, it's not an easy business. And he may know that if he were a long-term media investor, which he is not. So it's, it's a bizarre time for this. And I'm not sure the shareholders are going to go for this. What does uh, Disney have to lose? What does Iger have to lose, if anything, by saying, you know what? A lot of what Peltz is saying is are things that we want to do. We want to cost cut. We want to, you know, run this business efficient, efficiently, et cetera. And so, you know what? Have a seat on the board. Well, if Iger, Iger is very used to kind of having discretion and having a board that has been very supportive of what he's done. And he's returned. I mean, he has returned. This company's uh, re returns very well over the years in his first tenure. So welcoming back a guy like welcoming a guy like Peltz onto the board doesn't seem like it would be positive for Iger in the sense that he wants to do what he wants to do. Now, I don't know that he um, he looks at this in I don't think Pelt looks at this as a long term play. He's looking at this as a short term play. He's saying, OK, they could cut costs. But what Iger needs to do is he needs to set a strategic vision. He needs to look at this company and say, OK, what are we going to be in 5, 10, 15 years, much like he did when he took over the company the first time, and set a real path here for the streaming age? It's very different than when he left as CEO in 2020, and he's got to figure that out. And I don't know that Nelson Peltz is going to help him on the strategic side at all. Hey, Matt, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. Do you think some part of this is to get back to kind of the core flywheel that is what made Disney so successful um, and really uh, emphasize a little bit more on that parks and recreation business, which is the, the business that people invest around and delivers a dividend and, and is the magic kingdom? Yeah, absolutely. But it's interesting. One thing that Nelson Peltz does not mention in his statements is the pandemic. I mean, Disney went through a very, very rough time during the pandemic when the parks were absolutely closed. The cruise business was closed. And now coming out of the pandemic, those businesses are going through the roof. And really, it's the streaming arena where they have to kind of figure out the strategic vision. And yeah, that flywheel is the flywheel. And he's right to mention that and say, get back to that. But they're not really, they haven't really gotten away from the flywheel. They just have to figure out the transition from a cable television universe to a streaming universe. Because for so many years, Disney was buoyed by the streaming, or sorry, by the cable universe and by owning ESPN. And that is not going to be the case for the foreseeable future. They have to figure out what the streaming future is. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Matt Bellamy of Puck. Um, you know, it's interesting, Matt mentioned that uh, Peltz, this may not be a long-term play for him. It's not long-term for Iger either. So we've got two <laughs> short-termers here trying to figure out what the strategic direction is for the company maybe five or ten years out. Um, 
what would you wish the company would do? Well, for, let me just say one thing. Sure. I don't think of Pelt so necessarily as short term, right? He's been in some uh, right. of these things for a while. Sure. It's not like he's looking at, oh, let's get Disney sold, mm -hmm. right? So um, I think he has some, some credibility there. And he's, he's so one of the things I thought most powerful that he said, I have CEOs who I used to, you know, they used to be combatants. And now they support him. So that's interesting. But I mean, the succession issue, obviously, it hasn't been great. Tom Staggs, I think for a while, that was the, the heir apparent that, for whatever reason, he left the company. And then JPEG, I think they got to get that. And I think they can't do anything significant until they pay down some debt. They're really yeah. hamstrung by that. Yeah, I would just say the debt thing. And, you know, it's interesting. I mean, l listen, you know, Nelson Peltz, Bob Iger, they probably roll in the same circles. You, you, know, you know, I'm not sure you need to make a big case to get a board seat to kind of affect the change one way or another. And I don't see any reason why Bob Iger and, and the board need to give him a seat. You know what I mean? Like, have at it, you know? Like, go on CNBC with, with Mr. Faber every, every other week and, and talk to him about what they should be doing. They will hear it, and, and ultimately it will either work itself into the broader investor base and some of the management thinking. Matt said the timing was curious. That's probably my word, not his. Right. I think the timing is perfect if you're Nelson Peltz because, listen, he turned 80 years old last summer. He's extraordinary in what he's done in his career. This is Moby Dick for him. I understand Procter & Gamble is probably twice the size of Disney and market cap, but Disney is Disney. And everything he said, Bob Iger knows, absolutely. We talk yeah. about the same type of stuff. But if, in fact, Disney starts to turn around, Nelson can say, I was the guy that turned around the Walt Disney Company single-handedly. And that's a huge pelt on the pelts. Pelt for pelts. Wall. Um, do you want pelts on the board as a shareholder? How will you vote your proxy? Uh, why not? Um, but I, I, I don't, for, he's as qualified as, as some of the other people on the board sure. in terms of media experience. He's certainly qualified in terms of how to drive governance and drive efficiency. Uh, Bob Iger is doing this anyway. I think the most, what I want to see Disney do right now is get to paying a dividend. That's a big problem with the stock. This is a stock that people own for that dividend. It's the kind of a stock people own long-term for that income generation. And it, it implies free cash flow and profitability.